Hello, good people. This is Spot of Nerd, your favorite person of in- interest, I guess, or something like that. But yeah, we are officially back to more of the podcast side of things, just some audio. Uh, I've been contemplating, I'm not gonna lie, I've been contemplating about doing kind of this situation, you know, the podcast audio, but more visuals because truth be told, there has been a lot more traction from the visuals. I'm going to attribute that to my handsomeness, so we'll just go with that. But also it could have been because we were at San Diego Comic-Con. So something I'll think about in the future for now. Just to get more content out, obviously we're going to do a little bit more of just the audio versions. So hopefully you will be listening on Spotify or wherever podcasts can be heard. But you can also watch these through Rumble and the evil dreaded Death Star, or as I like to call, YouTube. So we're going to kind of do 180 degrees. We've done Comic-Con. It was an absolute blast. I encourage everybody to go check out the videos, uh, days one through four that are posted currently on Rumble, but is also on YouTube. So we won't go into it right now. YouTube has become quite the censorer, if that's a word. Uh, I've been encouraging folks, specifically at the end of day four on uh, Comic-Con, I've been noticing a lot of uh, viewership that is missing. As in, so you have views, and sometimes those higher views are decreasing. Now, obviously, just to be fair, that could be for a number of reasons. Simple case of... I, I literally don't know, but there could be just reasons why. I personally put it down to the fact of, let's just say I'm not the only one. This is not the first time I've heard folks that are losing views specifically because of, you guessed it, certain ideas, certain opinions, facts, and truths, which of course we will go into here in just a moment. Because we are back to our regular words regularly scheduled shit show and that of course means catching up with a lot of what you probably already know including trump and his fourth indictment now to put it metaphorically we are past the tipping point and yes i do mean that in a we are past that tipping point of they don't care the left the Democrats, etc., Biden crime family. They do not care about hiding anymore. They do not care that they are blatantly essentially being criminals right in front of your face because they know nothing, no one is going to stop them. And quite frankly, that should scare the living shit out of you. Now that is a broken record moment, but it should not be a broken record moment because we are officially in this country, in this world, we are at a critical moment. And you've heard that probably through a bazillion amount of people on social media and God knows what else. We are really at a critical moment. And if you're not seeing it, you're, I don't even know where to start because You are going to be the ones that are, when you look back in history, you're going to go, I wonder if I could have done something. And guess what? You could have. But you chose not to. It's no different. And again, I use this example many times in the past. I'll use it many times in the future. It's no different than people that were living during the 1940s in Nazi Germany. People that simply obeyed. Simply that pointed to their, simply that pointed to their neighbor and said, "They're one of them." Sounds familiar. Almost like they had vaccines or not vaccines. Sounds like they had a card that got them into a certain place and not into a certain place. Because that's the other side of things. 
if you're not paying attention. They're trying it again, or as I like to call, Plandemic number two. Now, for anybody with a brain, you would know that during September and October and the winter time, what usually occur what usually occurs during if you guessed the flu season, you would be correct because every single year in modern day history, there's always been a flu season, just like there's an allergy season, just like there's a spring and a summer and a winter and a fall. But they now know they can get away with it because it's already can you can already tell now credit where it's due i would say the majority are not falling for it currently as i speak but i have definitely noticed and that's the unfortunate thing about living in a blue state i've definitely noticed an uptick in the mask wearing now to be very clear I've always said this, I will never disrespect you for getting a vaccine, for getting a health treatment, for wearing a mask, so on and so forth. I want to make that very, very clear. I will not disrespect you for it. In fact, I believe it is your God-given right. Remember the my body, my choice debate? But when it comes to forcing other people to do it, to mask up, to get the jab, etc., that is a line that we will not cross again. That is a line that we will not allow to be pushed onto society ever again. Because you've got to put your foot down somewhere. Now, at the same time, I'm also just to be very clear, I am not promoting violence. I've said that many times in the past. But what it does come down to is, you will not do this again. Government officials, stores, so on and so forth. If you really want to push the scared dog in the kennel, in the back of the cage, try it again and see what happens. We fell for it once. Shame on you fall for it twice shame on me so we're in some very very interesting times with everything right now in relation to just the sheer authoritarianism that's going on i guess if that's i don't know if that's a word or not but you look at even i was reading recently um i'm a huge fan uh dr peterson he is, of course, the famous therapist, psychiatrist, uh, basically made headway because he speaks his mind. And from being from Canada, Canada, which, of course, is basically pre-Germany 1940, uh, they recently are threatening him that he has to undergo like this behavioral social media training because what it comes down to is he made somebody feel bad and got offended so he now has to go and do this like class or as we like to call re-education camp because long story short if you don't we're gonna take everything away from you including your license to you know be a medical professional so obviously he is not putting up with any of it and he is basically laughing his entire way you can actually check out his podcast it's actually it's very good to listen to it's informative etc so on and so forth so but again it is where you look at the united states really as being that last stronghold it said it's said a million times over by a million people millions plural of people this is the last stronghold once you lose the u.s the world is done you know we see it in the movies we see it with Schindler's List. We see it with the World War II's and the World War I films. We see it with those futuristic films of, you know, do as you say or die type situations. We're borderline there already. It just depends on where you are. But the United States really is that last threshold. And quite frankly, the next year, because we're only about, I want to what, about 11 months or so away from supposedly the next presidential debate 
it's going to get interesting. And quite frankly, if you check off all the boxes, the only one left is violence. And quite frankly, you know that's what they want. They want violence so bad, whether through racial divide, whether through um, you know medical choice, etc., so on and so forth, privacy, etc. They want people to uprise so bad because it will give them that final reason to push the button, the metaphoric button that, guess what? You can't control yourselves, so we'll do it for you. So I would just encourage anybody that's paying attention, the slightest bit of attention. I'm not telling you to vote for Trump. I'm not telling you to vote for a Republican. I'm just basically telling you to look at your life right now. I've said this many times, and I'm going to say it many times in the future. Look at your life right now and ask yourself, are you in a better spot? What's your bank account look like? What's your 401s look like? How much is food costing? How much is gas costing? How much is your electricity? Oh, will I drive an EV? Yeah, how's, how's your electricity bill doing? You know, in California, you're supposed to only run certain appliances at certain times a day, but you also should be dropping 100K on an, an electric vehicle because that'll be able to handle everything as far as the grid is concerned. You have to be absolute, you, you have to be an absolute lunatic with this climate change. The very people that are fearing about all this climate stuff are the same ones that have homes not 10 feet away from the water. The same ones that this whole energy crisis, they make millions upon millions of dollars that can afford it. You're a lunatic if you actually believe that they give a shit about you. They do not. These government elites, etc., they do not give a crap about you in relation to the climate. Look at the Maui situation. Terrible, terrible, horrible situation. Funny how that disappeared right out of the news, didn't it? It was on the news for about, what, maybe a week? Completely eradicated from any news source. Because you know why? The moment they tried to tell you it was for climate, nobody believed it. So guess what? They moved on to the next bullshit. It is laughable at just how predictable these people are. The scariest thing, though, is by... It's the old, the old trick of what they are telling you should make you think about what are they not telling you what are they making you basically not aware of in a day filled of you know the cameras everywhere social media your gps tracking everywhere what are we not being told that to me should scare the literal hell out of you because I can't even imagine if they're going to try and arrest a political appointment opponent, sorry. Just think what they'll do to you. Yeah, they can you can just use it as a silly metaphor. Oh, they'll never do it to me. They'll never it'll never happen to me. Tell that to political opponents that are being jailed because of their freedom of choice, their freedom of speech. It's disturbing, it's disgusting, it's all the above. Now, not all hope is lost. So let's kind of wrap it up. Let's wrap this episode up because, yes, you know me, we all know Ian, we all know Spot of Nerd. I love the nerdiness, the fandoms, etc., so on and so forth. But the best part about everything that's going on right now is there are far, far more people now that are awake to the bullshit than there ever has been in history. And the best thing about that is the left, the Democrats, Biden, they all know it. So as much as they're going to try their every bit of treasonous tyranny, there is not a chance in hell, I believe, we as the people will let it happen. And that is what gives me the hope that whatever 
we need to do to get through to put Trump in 2024, I think it's going to be okay. I really do. It's kind of weird to say optimistically, but I hope I'm right. You know what I mean? So we will very much continue this conversation well into the future. So I hope and pray that you please, please go ahead, hit that subscribe, follow and like button. Comment. I'd love to know your thoughts. Obviously, I do have more subscribers, so I really do appreciate all the new conversation and would love to get your insight, including the haters. You trolls are absolutely amazing because it's funny. You can always go on my Instagram. I would encourage it. It's at spot underscore of underscore nerd. Again, another one of those situations where the level of censorship is laughable at this point because nobody ever uh, likes stuff that I post because they can't see it. The only time you're going to see me is when I comment on something. And usually when I comment on something is when I get hundreds of reactions or comments. Uh, and most of them are related to me being a racist. So it's laughable. I encourage you to go watch because it's just, I destroy people left and right with my words. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, I've never hated or I'm never, I never push hatred or anger or discrimination, blah, blah, blah. I just want to be very clear on that. But what I do is, is I take whatever we'll call it bullshit somebody puts on me. For example, they will call me a racist. And I simply address to them, for example, the best one recently, we were talking about the new Star Wars Ahsoka series, and we will be talking about that next time. Let's just say I mentioned something that this is the continuation of the destruction of Star Wars and favorite characters, so on and so forth, but I'm a racist. So I simply pointed out the fact that, well, I'm not even mentioning race, but yet yeah, this other person is. So wouldn't you kind of conclude the person that continues to push racism might need to look in the mirror? Just just my two cents, just a thought, because I never bring it up because I don't need to. I don't judge people. I don't downgrade people based off of what they look like. I judge you by your character. I judge you who you are. I don't need to look at you and then judge you. So something to think about, you know, but anyway, it's a fun time. It's a fun story, Zzz, plural for the future, but I encourage you to check it out if you can. Otherwise, huge, huge thanks for all the support and the love. My love goes out to everybody. It really, really does. I super appreciate those that continue to follow. And again, Comic-Con was a blast 2023. Please go check those videos out if you just want to reminisce on the awesome that is San Diego Comic-Con. It really, I can't thank everybody enough for who participated and all my good friends. So um, we will continue this next time, but thank you for the 30th time, Broken Record, Spot of Nerd right here. Stay tuned for more and we will see you guys next time. Later y'all.